everybody, another episode of 4x4 Camping and Adventures. And in today's episode, I'm going to give you your five first mods. If you've got a stock standard vehicle, these are the first five mods you should do to that car to make it more capable off-road and better when you're out here in the bush. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Number one, on the list of any four-wheel drive, if you're going to modify it, get some new tyres. If you haven't got all terrains or mud terrains on there already, especially all terrains if you're going to do some light off-roading and some mud terrains if you're going to do some mud, hill climbs, all that kind of thing, the amount of traction these guys give you over the factory tyres, we're talking all terrains and, um, sorry, we're talking uh, highway terrains here, is absolutely massive. And this is why this is my number one mod. If you're getting into forward driving, you need to uh, make your car more capable off-road, get a decent set of tyres on that car because you'll be able to go further in uh, an off-road situation, you'll be able to get more traction, especially in mud, clay, all that kind of stuff, it's gonna go further off-road. So that's why that's my number one tip for a new forward driver get some new tires, get some good tires, get some good quality brands, and uh, and that will last you if you look after them. So that's my number one tip. Number two, if you've already got the tires and you've upgraded them, so my next mod will be underneath here. Get some good quality suspension. So, aftermarket brands, there's millions of them. You can look at pretty much anything, remote resi, all that kind of stuff. There's plenty of options out there on the market. So my advice would be go a simple two inch lift any higher than that, you're looking at new upper control arms, you're looking at caster issues, all that kind of thing. So go with a standard two inch lift. If you're gonna go higher than that, look at the extra cost. You're gonna have upper control arms, you're gonna to have to have um, diff drops, all that kind of stuff, which adds expense. So if you're trying to get nice and simply into forward driving, a two inch lift is gonna get you to 90% of places as long as you take the right line and you drive within your capabilities. So number two is suspension. Get some good quality suspension underneath your rig, lift it up a bit, get this body off the ground, if you get the bigger tires in your car as well, that's going to lift the diff up and you're halfway there for uh, having a pretty capable forward drive. So that's my number two. Alright, so my number three. One of these guys. If your car has not got a UHF aerial in it, put one in as my number three mod to any forward drive. Main reason is, you can't go wrong with some good comms. And if you're off-road, you can actually talk to the other people in the other vehicles call out for help. If you get stuck and you're going by yourself, you can jump on the channel, call out for help and see if someone can come rescue you. These are definitely worth their weight in gold. If you can't afford to put one of these on your car, get a um, handheld uh, radio because they go up to a kilometre now, so they're pretty decent for their size. As I said, number three, comms. You can't go good wrong with good comms. And if you're going to get comms, try putting this on either the roof rack or on the tub because you're actually going to get better range. On the front of the vehicle is fine, but if you can put this higher, it actually gives you better range overall. So number three on the list is comms. Can't go wrong without it. Let's go to number four. Now number four is a bit, it's gonna vary for every region. A snorkel. There's two reasons for this. One, it sucks in colder air than your factory intake on most cars, which is generally in front of the headlight or around this area in the headlights. A little bit hot, radiators putting out heat, it sucks in hot air. So these are gonna get nice cool up air, oh sorry, cool air from the top of your car or if it's a uh, safari snorkel or something like that, it's gonna be sucking in cold air as it drives along. Now, depending where you live, if you live out in the Simpson Desert, there's still a benefit to these. It's sucking in less dusty air from the top of the vehicle rather than dusty air that's coming out the front, especially if you're in convoy. So there's two good reasons there to put a snorkel on your car. There is a benefit, it does suck in colder air, so essentially your vehicle should work better. It should give you a little bit of a performance increase, nothing to write home about, but you will get a little bit of better performance increase. But I still reckon a snorkel for any off-road car, it just means if you're gonna go up to an area where there's a river crossing or something like that, you can do it comfortably and knowing that you can get through there without washing out your engine and filling it up with water. So that's why it's my number four. So let's go to number five. Number five. So, it's not the big spotties, it's not the big dirty intercooler, but this thing under here, bash plates. If you can get a good quality four mil bash plates, I've had these ones on the vehicle for three years now, they are essential for mud, rocks, all that kind of like forward driving, big ruts, where the front of your car is probably gonna bottom out and you're gonna start smashing some vital components which live under there, such as your diff, power steering, all that kind of stuff, lives underneath that bash plate, so you gotta protect it. Now, if you're gonna do mostly beach off-roading, not really needed, you do not need aftermarket bash plates for off-roading on the beach, it's crazy. Don't get into the hype of buying things you don't need because you can spend them on beer, you can spend them on diesel, and you can spend them on other stuff. So if you're gonna go mud, mud, you know, bog holes, rocks, all that kind of stuff, 100% get yourself some bash plates. But if you're gonna do basic touring, if you're gonna do basic full driving on the beach, don't buy into the hype, you don't need it. Save that money, put it somewhere else. So 
Number number five, the reason it's number five is most people when they buy a vehicle, they want to go off road. They do want to go into the mud, they do want to go into the rocks and they want to sort of try all that kind of stuff out. So get yourself some decent bash plates. It'll save yourself in the future. It's a cheap investment. And as I said, it'll go for a long time if you look after them. These have been on here for three years and the amount of times that they've saved my bacon from me smashing stuff in the front of my car is second to none. So that's why it's my number five. And if you stayed in this part of the video, I'll give you a bonus number six. Okay, so if you're here, bonus number six. Get yourself a good quality awning. I've been through a couple of awnings in my lifetime. Kings, super cheap auto Ridge Rider brand, and now I'm onto my Super Peg, and I've had this on the car for a couple of months now. But get yourself a good quality awning. That's gonna give you shade. It's gonna make you more comfortable when you're out and about, especially if you go down to the beach a lot. These are second to none. Having one of these on the beach is one of the best things you can have. You get shade, you can chill out, have a beer, watch the waves, or if you're just gonna get out of the water, you're not gonna get sunburn, all that kind of stuff. Make sure you get a thick UV rated canvas, but they are absolutely a great investment for your four wheel drive. That's why you see pretty much every four wheel drive with one of these on the side of it. Well, not this one, but generally a awning on the side of it. So that's my number six, bonus one. If you've got to this bit of the video, please like, subscribe, comment what your five favorite mods to a new vehicle would be. As I said, tires, suspension, comms, a snorkel, and bash plates are my five. But if you're getting into four driving, I reckon these five are gonna be absolutely perfect for you. And as I said, let me know what you think in the comments. As always, if I don't see you on the tracks and trails, I might see you in the next video. If I don't see you in the next video, I shall see you later. Bye.